Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and welcome back to New Rock Stars. Except I'm not Eric Voss, and this is not New Rock Stars. My name is Indigo, and while I am not New Rock Stars, I have been watching the channel for years to the point where it is a source of comfort for me. When the X Men movies were added onto Disney Plus, I have been watching and re watching those. There was literally probably two months where every single day I was watching X Men Origins. I don't care what you say, that's a great fucking movie. I would also watch the corresponding breakdowns that Eric would do on New Rock Stars. I've been been a Marvel fan since I was nine for my birthday we went and watched the first Captain America movie for context I'm turning 23 in two days so before I liked anything I liked Marvel I'm also a huge stay Stray Kids is my number one group I've been listening to k-pop since 2015 on and off I had like five songs I would listen to but that one faithful day when for Christmas Merry Christmas I got COVID and I was scrolling on TikTok and I saw that edit of Hyunjin in 2020 it was fucking over and I became a stay TLDR to sum it up, to make a long fucking story, when I saw Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, because I knew Ryan Reynolds was gonna be in there, but when I saw Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds, damn, double homicide. That was fucking crazy. I lost my shit. Literally, if my friends were to describe me, it would literally be Marvel fan, K-pop fan. So they did this for me. Yes. Mm. Is the only reason why Bang Chan befriended Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman was to get them in a music video so I'd be happy? Mmm. Well, well, yes. When I was watching the music video, I was like, haha, that would be hilarious if Eric Voss did a breakdown of this because Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are in it. I doubt that's gonna happen. So I was like, why don't I just take matters into my own hands? And even if he were to do a breakdown, I don't know how much of a K-pop fan he is. And I just think it's perfect if I do it because I'm a stay and I'm a Marvel fan. Shout out to new rock stars. This is a inspired copy <laughs> off of you guys and obviously shout out stray kids and let's get started now actually uh wait a second wait a second wait a second wait a second guys wait a second actually before we get started there's lore i know oh my god lore fnaf lore was that the bite of 87 you need to know not specifically stray kids lore in their story because bitch i'm still trying to figure that shit out that in 80s I can't get the lore. I don't think I'm ever gonna get the lore, and that's okay. But you need to know the lore between Stray Kids, Hugh Jackman, and Ryan Reynolds. In 2020, a K-pop competition show called Kingdom, which tells so many problems within its own, Stray Kids did a Deadpool-inspired performance. My song. They actually did their song, God's Menu, mixed with doo 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 doo, -doo and oh my fucking God, that's one of my favorite performances. If you wanna get into Stray Kids, I'd recommend that as a performance you definitely should watch. It was just a huge tribute to Deadpool, very campy, very fun, loved it so much. I'm pretty sure literally all of the members are huge Marvel fans, but specifically Bang Chan, Felix, and I know Changbin for a while had a Black Panther phone case. So Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman actually saw this. Well, first we'll say Ryan Reynolds saw this. Bro, if somebody does a trivia performance to me, yeah, I'ma like you. <laughs> like, yes, I'm gonna like you. So they followed each other. He, Ryan and Hugh followed them back and Hugh obviously took an extra liking to them because if you don't know this, Bang Chan and Felix are Aussies. Yeah, they're Australian. Well, yeah, well, yeah, well, no. Nah. Well, yeah, no. Nah. Ryan sent Bang Chan his aviation gin which I guess Bang Chan just stares at it because K-pop idols don't drink, even though this nigga is literally 26 years old. Yeah, they've had plenty of interactions since this over the years, Instagram comments, blah fucking blah For Bang Chan's birthday, Ryan Reynolds was promoting the video game movie he did, the f Fall Guy, not Fall Guy. When it was Bang Chan's birthday, he literally turned into a fan page. Like, bruh, it was so serious for him. And I said in 2022 that Stray Kids would be on the Deadpool soundtrack. I will admit I was wrong. I thought it would be <laughs> case 143 because there was a part in the music video where they broke the fourth wall, but that was two years ago and this is now. I was also wrong because I thought Chick Chick Boom would be the song, but they ended up making an original song for the movie, which I just listened to and it was fucking great. Also yesterday, I was walking minding my own black business and I literally walked past the world premiere of Deadpool and Wolverine and I ended up seeing Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman in the flesh. Did I manifest that? I actually did. I'm not gonna lie, I actually did manifest that. So very much slay. That's what happens when you mind your business. Which I guess I wasn't minding my business because I manifested it. But I didn't manifest, I just manifested that I would run into Hugh Jackman. So I'm gonna take this as a win. That's a W. So while I was wrongly saying that Case 143 would be the song or Chick Chick Boom would be the song. 
technically I was still correct about them being on the fucking Deadpool and Wolverine soundtrack. So I win, I win. That's another W for me. And it's so funny because it's like, did I think they would be linked to Deadpool in some way? Yes. This much? No. Bitch, Ryan Reynolds said that he was trying to get Stray Kids in the fucking movie, but like schedules didn't match up, which I believe him, but also I don't. So if they act, if they pop up in the fucking movie, I'm actually gonna lose my shit. But so now that you know that this collaboration did not come out of nowhere because a lot of people are discovering Stray Kids for the first time because both Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds are in it and you know that this collaboration has been coming basically since 2020. Okay, let's get started. And goddamn, we start out strong with Hugh fucking Jackman. I did not think he was going to be in the music video. I just thought it was gonna be Ryan Reynolds. So I was so fucking happy. Oh my God. And it's so funny too, because when they dropped the preview of the music video, I thought Ryan Reynolds in that TV, like just barely in that TV talking as the news anchor. I thought that was literally it. I thought that was it. He was throughout the whole music video. He was there throughout the whole time. I think it's finally starting to hit me, but this is history. Like no other K-pop group can say, oh yeah, we had Marvel actors playing their characters that they play in the Marvel universe in our music videos. It might not be true, but I don't care. Stray Kids is canon in the MCU. And I love when they like had to lie. Are there any hints of like Stray Kids being in the Marvel universe? Woo! Oh, we wish. I mean, we have our own universe, so um, <clears throat> we don't need time for Marvel. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. No, 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 no. I mean, we, we have to get the chance. Yeah, we, we have get the chance. chance. You're ready. We love to. <laughs> They're such bad liars. They're actually the shittiest liars ever. Cause the girl was like, "Are you guys in the MCU?" They could be like, "No." Why was Felix like? Nigga. Okay, I'm treating this as a Marvel product, so we're looking at everything for Easter eggs, starting with this. So all the dates on the map might possibly be potential places that they tour, which New York, LA, not far-fetched at all. Right before Hugh walks off, there are additional dates of Mexico City, Belize City, Havana, and San Juan. And since they are doing an actual international tour, not just being like international, and then they like go to fucking America, these could also be potential dates. So if you live, if there are arenas there, I don't fucking know, I've never been. So it seems like this is not Wade Wilson and Logan, this is Ryan dressed up as Deadpool and Hugh dressed up as Wolverine. Bro, when I saw the CCB news, I was like, oh, is this Christopher Chan Bang? No, it stands for Chick Chick Boom. So the bottom text says, they are occurring simultaneously all around the world, capturing worldwide attention. Unique drawings and installations that almost seem like art pieces have appeared on walls and streets. Experts from various fields have gathered to find the cause of these phenomenons, but have yet to identify a clear expression, however, and then, it cuts off. Throughout this music video, you're gonna see a lot of graffiti surrounding them. And it's just words from this song or just off the album. I actually ended up going here to film the cover. And this is Gay Street on Waverly Place in West Village. It's called Gay Street because while the street is a part of the Stonewall National Monument dedicated to LGBT rights, Wikipedia says its name probably came from a family named Gay who lived there during colonial times. What a coincidence. However, I have no clue which one in their team is a rat. Yapa yapa yapa. But them filming here got leaked, so they had to like cover everything with umbrellas and had to listen to the music and in ear. Actually, I thought it was because they didn't want the song to get leaked, but it was because, you know, ri rights? Hello? Your Miranda rights? Your Miranda Cosgrove rights? Because you can't like blast the music that loud because it is a residential area. Once again, we see graffiti and Lino surrounded by it in this kitchen, like pop, 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 amigo, and boom. He's holding a spray can that says target and i think it and the graffiti is meant to represent not only the mark stray kids have left on the industry and the world so far but stray kids themselves later in the song changbin says sick of this life is regular and graffiti is usually disrupting the regular plain things around it like the walls with one solid color making it more bright and colorful also, graffiti tags are a way to show who the person is or a way to one-up the rival gang in GTA. But I'm also saying the graffiti is Stray Kids itself because the news said capturing worldwide attention and that's what Stray Kids has done. Stray Kids everywhere all around the world is not only a great affirmation, but it's basically their tagline. That's where I see the parallels. This sticker has lyrics that come later in the song, 
But I also think it's a reference to a different song that they've come out with in the Five Star album, which I will get into later. Don't worry. I am number one. Five Star is the best thing that Stray Kids has ever come out with. Felix, sorry for the bad screenshot. They're a little to the right of the Empire State Building in K-Town, which I frequent constantly. And the taller building behind them seems to be One World Trade, but they're on Park Avenue and East 40th Street. It would probably be easier to film everything at one place, which seems like it's what they did. I was trying to figure out if this car in the background was a Deadpool reference, but it seems just to be a regular rental express car the front part is black with silver on it or maybe that's just a dent from everything falling I don't know but I'm assuming since the car is black and red it's a Deadpool reference anything that's black and red Deadpool reference oh shit hold on a second that's better almost forgot I literally laid this out also this is a stay necklace so slay okay is this like the fucking clown car are all of them supposed to fit in that car this is literally a clown car han is standing directly under the stray kids logo it looks a little different but it's just that the k and the z are more elongated to fit outside the circle he's also holding a spray can same like lino if we're treating this music video like a story it seems like their mission is to spread their god which i'm taking the same definition from that song killing it by p1 harmony which is their own unique color around all of new york city and worldwide but in Lino's shot and the next shot coming up, there was a sticker and a poster that said mission completed. On a storytelling and lore type beat that we're going on, and on top of the tone of this song, which to me has a very laid back, cocky sort of confidence, which Stray Kids literally said it does, I feel like they don't have a mission to complete because they already got your attention. They already got what they wanted. Like, of course they're gonna get bigger, but I feel like they're at a point now where they've put in all of that work so now the fruition of their hard work is manifesting and all they have to do is sit back and relax and watch fucking Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman and their goddamn music video. In this shot, they're surrounded by falling chairs, desks, tables, and other random things. A computer chair is falling behind Han and oh my God, watch out. Depending on the height that that's coming from, that's definitely concussion city for you. I'm gonna ask this more again later, but what are they doing to where things are falling out of the sky. What is this phenomenon? That's also very dangerous. Like Chan is looking at a map of what I'm assuming is New York City. It doesn't even look like a train map. I don't know where the fuck he got that from. The last time I saw a physical map was on the train. Chan, I have no idea why you're using a physical map. Just fucking use your phone. Han passes by three chick chick boom posters, one of which is in front of NYC. More mission cleared posters, graffiti of IN, which it looks like a full word, but it's blocked out. And I think they did that on purpose. So we could spell out his name, level it up, la vida loca, boom, snipe, vamos, and a flyer for piano and vocal lessons. He also passes by the focal point of the shot, which are the white squares. We then cut to squares in different places in New York City. I'm gonna refer to this as the painting now. The painting is shown surrounded by more graffiti and one of these places look like Soho, which I might be wrong, I don't fucking know. It kind of reminds me of like portals and art to me, which fucking TVA, like this is giving very much of that. And if it were to represent anything to me, I think it's that no matter what or where, Stray Kids will always be successful. The surroundings of the painting change, but the painting slash portal doesn't change. Even this line, I dance as I planned, keep going, is like everything's gonna work out how I want it to, so I'm gonna continue to move as such. The next shot is Changbin, my bias. Aligned perfectly, looking at what this point is the painting that was in the last couple of shots. When we cut to his wide ass back, you see random paintings with the same white squares everywhere. Hyunjin enters the room and I definitely think that they picked him on purpose. One of Hyunjin's pastimes is that he draws and paints and he's really fucking good at it. In the two paintings, you see Lino and on the right, his hair seems to mimic Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And going back to what I said before about how I think the I'm Strong sticker represents another song. I think the song that this is referencing is Hall of Fame by Stray Kids. This is actually the second time Stray Kids has made this Neil Armstrong pun, but Chungbin added a little more to the pun. Neil Armstrong being the first astronaut and person to walk on the moon. In the next shot, it cuts to Ian and the kids dancing inside the, I'm pretty sure this is the building they filmed inside, 101 building on East 40th Street, the same place that they dance outside of later. If you zoom in, you can actually see the Park Avenue sign right outside. I also think the blue light behind him is the city bank across the street lit up at night. Then it cuts to Ian, Lino, and Hyunjin looking at something totally different from what Sungmin is about to shoot, which <laughs> fucking baba rasha like i laughed so hard when i saw this because one i don't know why k-pop idols are so obsessed with guns like south korea has some of like the best gun control ever which please k-pop idols please 
please be appreciative of what you have. But second of all, this shot is giving Deathstroke, and if you don't know, Deadpool is the parody version of the DC character Deathstroke. When he shoots, thank God it's not a bullet. The last person I would give a gun to in Stray Kids is Sung Min, or Lino, or Hyunjin for that matter. The shot explodes into a colorful explosion, which I feel like proves my point of the goal story-wise of Stray Kids leaving their mark on the world. We finally get to the dance and I'm fucking sweating. This dance isn't really Stray Kids style, it's definitely more chill, which gives them the opportunity to show their personality more. It's a good mix of laid back when it needs to be and strong when it needs to be like during the gun part. And the fact that the dance is more chill makes those stronger parts stand out more which is something Changmin literally ended up saying in the video. During their filming on Gay Street, I know what you are, every time the song goes boom, graffiti lights up, and every time we hear the reload sound, we are placed inside the barrel of the gun and its twisted city buildings, which is so cute. If you're curious about some of the fashion that's going on, Changmin's in Valentino, Felix is obviously in Louis Vuitton. If you don't know, he's the brand ambassador for Louis Vuitton, which cunt mother diva hunty slay. Ayan has this sweater from List. I think that's how you pronounce it, I have no clue. Lino's jacket is from Off-White, Bangtan's blazer is also from Off-White. During the second chorus, I was trying to figure out if they were dancing on Park Avenue and how much of it was green screen, but they actually were and part of it was they like blocked it off, which is so cool. And you see the cars driving in the background, which fucking hilarious. Imagine you're watching a music video and you're like, oh my God, is that me picking my nose in the back of my fucking Subaru with the- Also, I wanna say that in the beginning of this video's choreography, I don't know if this is a reference, but this part reminded me of the part in the Deadpool stage that they did. Once again, there's more graffiti behind Ian. I think the coolest one is the huge eight, which is the title of the album, Go Stream. And now here's where I have questions. How did they get in contact with Ryan? Did they pay him off? If they have his number and they feel comfortable enough to call him while he's literally live and he picks up while he's literally live, that must mean that they're close and that whatever's happening is urgent. But if Ryan is a news anchor and Deadpool, this puts him into a conflict of interest because, because how are you helping the people that you're reporting on? Also, doesn't this out them as the mysterious phenomenon? And why did Ian show off who he was calling to the camera that also outs Ryan? And it says experts from various fields are gathering together to figure out what's going on. And if experts from various fields are gathering together to figure out what's going on, obviously this is an Avengers level threat. And later when Ryan gets the call to the point where he has to change into his Deadpool outfit, I'm assuming that means he's helping Stray Kids somehow. And if you're calling Ryan Reynolds because you need something and he changes into his Deadpool outfit, I'm assuming what you're doing isn't really legal. I understand Stray Kids objective in this music video is to make their mark on the world. So where does Ryan come into the picture for that? And that's when I got it. This is an inside job. Ryan is helping them become more known by reporting on them in the news and obviously in real life, but by being in their music video. Since the song is called Chick Chick Boom and we don't see what Ryan specifically does, I'm assuming he was the one that did the Chick Chick Booming. Well, that's it for me. I already knew that it was a lot of work that went into those new Rockstars videos, but doing this just made me have a new level of appreciation for new Rockstars. So shout out to Eric, shout out to Jessica, and shout out to everybody else, both on and off screen, helping with the new Rockstars channel. Like literally the amount of work that went into this and I didn't even really go as in depth as I could of it's crazy obviously another shout out to stray kids which if you're watching this i've been a stay since 2020 you guys have really fully gotten me into k-pop and i hope you are as proud of this as stay is you can go watch my reaction video to the rest of the album here and if you want more content of me talking about stray kids and eight i am posting like multiple times a day on tiktok for the past couple days so follow me here and that's it Bye. Goodbye, win it all again, and I do it easily. Yeah. Checking off my goals with no effort, I do it feasibly. Mm -hmm. I could do 